Lord Jagannath here in Rajapur is not different from Lord Jagannath in Puri. Stay tuned if you want to find out why. Roll the intro! What's up Temple Nerds? It's me, Prema, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, here we're finally doing that part two of the Jagannath Mandir in Rajapur Simantadweep. If you haven't seen part one, please check out part one, or you could watch this and then go check out part one. It's up to you. In the book Navadweep Dham Mahatmya, Bhaktivinoda Thakur tells of an instance from the 7th century about King Raktabahu of Odisha who destroyed temples and harassed his citizens. The devotees in Puri prayed to Lord Jagannath, who one night appeared in the head Pujari's dream. Lord Jagannath told the Pujari not to worry because Raktabahu will not enter Puri. The Pujari still expressed his worry about the welfare of the deities, so then Lord Jagannath instructed him to remove the deities of Jagannath, Baladev, and Subhadra in the morning and carry them to Bengal by going through the jungle since Raktabahu would stay on the main roads. Now, in Puri, the care of the deities of Lord Jagannath are entrusted to people called sevaks. They do seva, or service, to the deities. And um, this service has like a lineage, like it stays within a family, and everybody has a different service that they pass down from generation to generation. So one such service belongs to the tribe of Shabaras, and they are entrusted with carrying the deities of Lord Jagannath whenever there's a festival. So like they'll, you know, carry the deity of Jagannath from the temple to the cart for Ratha Yatra and then, um, or like at Snan Yatra, they'll take the deities of Lord Jagannath to the Snan Vedi where they take their bath, things like that. So the Shabara tribe then was given this monumental task of taking the deities of Lord Jagannath, Baladev and Subhadra away from Puri. So for 12 days they traveled through the jungle, um, basically only being able to offer whatever they could find in the jungle, like whatever fruits and flowers and tubers that they could find. And finally um, they arrived at Simantadweep and in Simantadweep the head of the Shabara clan had a dream where Lord Jagannath said that he wanted to stay there. So the Shabara tribe installed the deities of Lord Jagannath right here in Rajapur. However over time the deities disappeared, temple disappeared, even the Shabara tribe disappeared. But to this day there is a village in Simantadweep called Shabara Danga or Sharadanga, where the Shabra tribe used to live. As we stated in our last video, there's the Samadhi of Jayananda Thakur. When you pass that Samadhi, you get to a massive tree. This is called a Kalpa Vriksha tree. Kalpa Vriksha is a wish-fulfilling tree. And the locals here say that Lord Shiva and Parvati used to perform austerities here and even still live here. And as you can see, it is very common to make a wish and tie a stone or a piece of cloth to this tree. I'll be honest with you, I've tied plenty of stones and cloth to this tree and nothing happened. But maybe, maybe other people have had more luck than me. Or maybe the things I wished for weren't worthy of fulfilling. <laughs> Under this tree, there's also a Shiva Lingam. There's a pastime that when Iskan had just acquired this land, the Pujari was making an offering to Lord Jagannath, and he pushed the stone away with his foot, and then he immediately got extremely sick. He had an intense headache, he kept vomiting, he was super weak, he was trying to get home and he kept passing out. So when he got back to the ISKCON campus, they advised him to go back. This is actually not a regular stone, it's a Shiva Lingam. Worship it, beg for forgiveness and see if you'll feel better. So he did just that and he immediately felt better. I took all this footage that you see here on January 1st of 2023. Uh, since then, the Shiva Lingam has been built a beautiful little temple and the worship is continuing in the temple and not directly under this tree. 
So nice to see that he has a little home. Right next to the temple of Lord Shiva, you'll see the old temple that Lord Jagannath used to live in. Now he has a big, beautiful temple. Um, now this old temple is a space used for preparations for festivals, or when Lord Jagannath gets sick after Snanyatra, he's brought here to be in hiding and recover from his sickness. Behind the old temple, we can see this pond that's used in the summer for the boat festival, where the deities are taken to this boat, and then the Pujaris then row, row, row the boat gently around the pond. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Okay. And then devotees are around the pond and they get to make offerings to the deities of the Lord. Um, usually like, you know, food offerings, food preparations, home cooked meals, or flowers, tulsi, that kind of thing. And it's such a it's such a sweet pastime. It's such a sweet festival to attend. So man. Look at it, but don't touch it. It's for Juggernaut Swami. Okay, that's what I stand close. You stand close? Yeah. Why are they orange? There's so many different colors. When we continue past the pond, we can see all around us actually, um, there's a beautiful garden with fragrant colorful flowers that are used to worship Lord Jagannath. And there's lots of these big shady trees. And in the summer it is laden with mangoes and jackfruit. And it, it just like, there's such a peaceful, like natural vibe here. And I can feel like Lord Jagannath is like so happy here. Like he's like just frolicking in this little grove of trees. Next to the Simantini Devi temple, there is a little spot here to chant. So if you chant the Hare Krishna mantra for each stone around this Tulsi plant, you will have chanted the Hare Krishna mantra 108 times. That's a whole round. So you do that 16 times and uh, you did your rounds for the day. And finally, last but definitely not least, we have the Simantini Devi and Goranga Mahaprabhu Mandir. And I feel like I say this about every single spot in Jagannath Mandir, but this is like my favorite place. It's so beautiful. Here um, we see the temple of Simantini Devi and Goranga Mahaprabhu. The temple is made in that terracotta, is it called? terracotta style of temples. And um, these deities are so beautiful. Here we see Parvati Devi and her lotus eyes are half closed and she's meditating on the glorious form of Goranga Mahaprabhu who's standing before her. And there is a pastime related to this, but I don't want to tell that pastime here. I'm waiting for a later video. But I will say there is another very sweet pastime um, related to Parvati Devi. And that is that one time Narada Muni had visited Lord Vishnu and Lakshmi Devi. And, you know, Lord Vishnu eats and then Lakshmi Devi has whatever is remaining from whatever he eats. And he specifically instructed her do not give my remnants, my prasadam, to anybody else. With Narada Muni being there, he begged for it. Please, just give me a little bit, just a taste, just a morsel. Just, I just want something. And they kind of relented and they said, all right, we'll give you a little bit of prasadam. So Lechmi Devi gave a little bit of Lord Vishnu's prasadam to Narada Muni. And he just ate it up and he was absolutely ecstatic. He was so ecstatic. He ran over to Kailash to tell Lord Shiva um, about this rare blessing that he got. Uh, when Lord Shiva heard about this, he said, well, where's my prasadam? And Narada Muni felt a little embarrassed. He, he didn't have any prasadam, so Lord Shiva became very angry. Then Narada Muni was looking at his hand that he got the prasadam in, and he's looking, he's, and he looks under his nails, and he says, oh, there's a morsel under my nails here. So he takes out that morsel, and he's like, look, this is some Maha Prasad, and he gives it to Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva immediately tosses it back in his mouth and he starts dancing in ecstasy at having the Mahaprasad of Lord Vishnu and he dances so ecstatically that the earth is starting to fall down into like the lower planets. So Bu Devi, the goddess, the mother goddess, the goddess of the earth, um, runs over to Parvati Devi, who's the wife of Lord Shiva, the consort of Lord Shiva. And she says, look, your, your husband, Lord Shiva is dancing so ecstatically that the earth is falling. Can you please talk to him about this? So then Parvati Devi goes to Lord Shiva 
and says, why are you dancing so ecstatically? I've never seen you dance like this before. So, so heavily that the earth is falling into the ground. Lord Shiva says, yes, I got the Mahaprasad of Lord Vishnu. And then she says, great, where's my share? I'm your other half, we share everything. Then Lord Shiva starts to feel a little guilty, but when he says this, it also sounds like a little bit arrogant, so I don't know. But then he says that he didn't save any prasadam for her because she's not qualified to honor the prasadam of Lord Vishnu because she's not a pure devotee. Then she says that she is called Vaishnavi and she regularly worships Lord Vishnu with love and devotion. And then she tells him that if this is true, if what she says about herself is true, then she promises that if she ever, see you don't mess with a woman, if she ever gets any prasadam of Lord Vishnu, She's not gonna be like him. She's gonna give it to everybody. She said, if I ever get Lord Vishnu's prasadam, even the dogs, even the jackals are gonna eat it. Everybody, I'm not gonna restrict who can have prasadam and who can't have prasadam. It's going to everybody. So then Lord Vishnu appears and he fulfills her promise. He says, okay, anytime I have prasadam, I'll give it to you. You'll be the first one to offer it. And you, I'll take, he, he decides he'll take off that restriction It'll be distributed to everyone. So now we see like in Jagannath Puri, for example, Jagannath, the deity of Lord Jagannath will eat and then they immediately take that prasad to Bhimala Devi, which is another name of Parvati. They take it to her temple, she eats, and that prasadam goes everywhere. It goes everywhere. Anybody can have that prasad. So in the same mood here at Jagannath Mandir in Rajapur, any offering made to Lord Jagannath in the temple is immediately brought here to Simantini Devi. She honors it and then everybody has the Maha Prasad. So thank you so much for watching my video. This is part two of a two part video about Jagannath Mandir. And if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe for more content. Please check out the description box below to find out more ways to support us. As always, be good to each other, be good to yourselves, and thank you for being dumb good. Bye!